Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hi, guys. How's it going? How are you? We're great. Good. We're really good. Yes. How's everything going over there? Good. Uh, thanks okay. again for calling us today. And I didn't know if you wanted to just to do a recap. And then I have some students that wanted to talk uh, toward the beginning before we do question and answer. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, we're super excited to talk to you guys today. Have you guys had fun this year? Yay! Yes. <laughs> well timed, um, well timed. We, we loved talking with you guys and getting to send you videos, and we're so proud of all the hard work you guys have been doing this year. Um, it's really fun to not only get to share with you guys, but to hear sort of your responses to the videos and see how you guys are learning and growing, and also learning from you guys as well. Some of your responses inspire us, and um, it's really fun for us to get to work with you guys. So thank you for allowing us to teach. That. Yeah, it's been wonderful being a part of your guys' um, lives, and you know we we are so fulfilled by you know being able to mentor you and, and sort of share some of the insights that we've learned. Um, but it, like Meryl said, we we learned so much from you guys that we really want you to know that um, everything you did was was huge for us, not just for you, which which is obviously the most important thing, but but we really took a lot out of it too. So um, we're really looking forward to, to any questions you have uh, or anything you want to say. Yeah. We decided to put together a little overview of our year. So I'm going to have a student talk Great. about each month and then what they got out about each topic. So Gabby Great. first. Oh, that. I'm um, Gabby T, also known as Ariel Tackett, and um, I like the month <laughs> goal setting because it really made me think about what I'm going to do with my life. This year so far, I've achieved my school goal. Thanks, Classroom Champions. <laughs> yeah, Classroom Champions. Hi, my name's Angelina and Tapatha, and my favorite um, month was Fair Play. Fair Play taught me how I should act to others, and when I lose a game or when people are disappointed when they lose a game. We did different um, skits to show how to be fair. Cool, love it. So, I like community month a lot because going down to the special needs class and playing Uno with them and seeing them smile made my day. I'm so happy that I got to spend time with them. Okay, in my Excellent. <laughs> my name is Owen Breckenridge, and my favorite month was Perseverance, and uh, I learned a lot about it. Like, we are, like, some people don't have, like, some of their limbs and stuff like that, and uh, we should act more responsible with that. And the personal experience that I have had with Perseverance is uh, one time I was running to the bathroom, but I threw up. And uh, it really smelled, and my mom made me clean it up, and it was just really disgusting. But I cleaned it up anyway, and I persevered through it. So nice. that's, that's a that's a that's a tough one. That was a tough one to persevere through. I know. I've been there too. Uh, my name is McKenna. I really like Steps to Success. It was my favorite because it helped me a lot with volleyball. In volleyball, I had to learn to surf overhand. So when I did the Steps to Success, it actually helped. It actually helped me. It made me put more thought into volleyball, and it really helped me just to remember to take my time, have the right form, and don't let other the other teams distract me. That is why I like Steps to Success. Nice. That's awesome. In Friendship Month, I learned that there are friends that we don't know, so it's our choice to talk to our community and make friends. For example, talk to different people at lunch or play with different people at recess. Little do you know, people will treat you the same way that they that you treat them. It's your choice to be a good citizen. In February, we had Friendship Friday where we got to meet new friends. Awesome! I love Friendship Friday. That's a great idea. Hi, uh, my name is Cruz, and my favorite month was Leadership M Month. I love the leadership um, project that we did, which was Science Heroes. We had to choose a field of science we liked, like mine was zoology, which is the study of animals. And then we had to choose a scientist who was a leader in that field. Mine was Diane Fossey, who studied and made a big deal to the mountain gorilla. 
Then we had to research our scientist and give a presentation, either Google Slides or a poster. I did a Google Slide and it was an awesome presentation. That's why this was my favorite month. Nice. Yeah, that's great. Hi, my name is Will Leisure, and I did Healthy Living Month was my favorite, and uh, Healthy Living taught me about my own life. I learned that everyone can be, can be healthier. I ran nine miles at the end of April. That was my favorite. Ooh. Every time I go to the park, I run two miles, and I walk a mile there. I also get healthier snacks. I still get the same amount of sleep, but I can still use improvement. Thank you for teaching us, Meryl and Charlie. Nice, cool. good work, bud. That's you're gonna awesome. Be, you're going to be my running inspiration from now on. I love it. That's incredible. And so because we just began We Are Champions Month, obviously we don't have a review for that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Wa we watched the video, and we really enjoyed uh, what you had to say. And obviously, hopefully, you could see how much the students learned from each month. So we really appreciate everything that you've done for us uh, throughout the year. Oh, my yeah. goodness. You guys were um, – that was amazing. Yeah, that brought a, a literal tear to my eye. You probably you can't see because of the glasses, but – very good. Very, very good. That's that's some really excellent stuff. Do you guys have any questions for us? Yeah. Um, I think Nathan's going to come up. We'll just do several questions, and then we have a little surprise yeah. at the end. Oh, great. Sounds great. Um, what inspired you to be a ice skater? What are some of your passions? That's a great question. Um, I, I grew up on a lake in Michigan. And it freezes over in the winter, and so I would skate on the lake with my family. Um, and so I just wanted to take lessons. A lot of kids where we grew up take skating lessons because there's so much skating. And I just fell in love with how fast you can go and, and sort of what skating allows you to do that you can't do on the floor. Um, so just sort of falling in love with skating was um, what inspired me to, to try to become a skater. Um, I started skating when I was five, uh, right at the local skating rink. Um, my mom always thought that it would be good for me to learn. So if I ever went with friends, I would, I would be able to skate around the rink and just hang out. But I fell in love with it. Um, I started playing hockey around the same time too. And, and that's definitely one of my other passions. And, um, I also grew up playing the violin. And so the athleticism of hockey and the uh, musicality of violin actually both really helped my figure skating. So my other passions really um, played a huge part in, in, in my success in, in, as an ice dancer. Great question. Hi, my name is Aiden. And, um, What's up, Aiden? Um, if you didn't have a... If you didn't learn how to ice skate, what other job would you rather have? That is a good question. Um, I don't really know the answer to that, to be honest with you. Um, so I am 28. Charlie's 27. I'm 28. And we are still college students um, because we've been, you know, doing school and skating at the same time. And so one way I could probably answer that is that we would have graduated from college a long time ago <laughs> if we weren't skaters. Um, and... You know, we were telling one of the girls in the class that we spoke to last time that we've learned that you don't really have to pick a job that already exists necessarily. Um, you know, when we were younger, we thought, okay, well, you either have to be a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher um, or an athlete. And we're sort of learning that you can do a lot of different things. Um, you know, we can be skaters. We can work with nonprofits. We can we can do a lot of different things, and that would be our job. Um, so it, it's hard to sort of answer your question because we don't really know. But maybe Charlie has a more definite answer for you. Oh yeah, I would definitely be a lawyer. <laughs> no, I actually have no idea. Um, that was one thing that I always thought maybe I would want to do growing up. Um, but you know, you have to go to law school. So, um, if I want to become a lawyer, I still have to do that. Uh, it's, it was something that always interested with, uh, me, the, the logic and, and the argumentative side, um, seemed fun, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. What, what do you, what do you guys want to do? What do you want to be? Do you know? Who asked the question? We, we you raise your hand. Who asked the, oh yeah. Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? 
He's much like you, Meryl. He doesn't know yet. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. We're in the same boat. We're in the yeah. same boat. Part of the beauty of not deciding what you want to be is that you have the opportunity to explore a lot of different things. So exactly. it's not always a bad thing. <laughs> Great. Hi, my name is Trey Dawson, and I was wondering what do you guys do if you get nervous before a competition? Well, we always get nervous before we compete. There's, there's, you know, we learned from 18 years of competing together. There's nothing we could do to not get nervous. But um, for us, the key to going into a competition and, and feeling as good about it as you can is just by preparing the best you can. You know, and like when you guys are taking a test, I'm sure you guys have taken tests where you are not prepared, as prepared as you should be, and that made you nervous. And you've probably taken tests where you knew you had prepared, you had studied, you had done everything that you knew you could, you needed to, but you're still nervous. Um, but at the end of the day, you know that you've at least put yourself in a position to succeed. And for us, that was where we drew our strength from. You know, in the face of, uh, you know, of the pressure and, and the stress and nerves of these big competitions, we could at least draw upon, draw upon the fact that we knew we had done everything that we could for that moment. And, you know, that was all you could ever ask for. So you guys, I'm sure we, you've learned that already, but you can always remember that just preparing for anything as great as you can is going to be the greatest thing you can do to, to take nerves away and to help deal with them. Really good question. Hi, my name's Audrey. Um, my question was, where is your favorite place to travel for your job? Yeah, that's interesting. Um... My favorite place that we've been is Italy, I think. Um, we didn't compete there, but we competed in a country called um, Slovenia. We did compete there. We competed in Milan. We did compete in uh, we've Torino. Compete, yeah, oh, Torino. We've competed in a lot of places. Uh. But we, we, we went to Italy for the first time after we competed in a, a nearby country just to stop over for a couple of days. We went to Venice. Have you guys ever seen pictures of Venice or heard of Venice before? It's that floating city. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, they have boats that go around because the gondolas, there are waterways yeah. through the whole city, and I just think Italy is so beautiful. Um, I think that's probably my favorite place we've been. I always really like uh, Japan. Tokyo, in particular, is such a huge city, and the, the culture is so different, um, but it's very interesting, and I love the food, so that helps. <laughs> My name's Austin, and uh, my question is, were you ever in Junior Olympics? Junior Olympics? We were. What a great question. Um, now, the Junior Olympics is called Junior Nationals, I believe. Um, there's the Youth Olympics, um, which I don't think involves figure skating, actually. Does it? Okay. Um, so, it's changed since we were, <laughs> since we were kids. Um, but when we were... In 1998 and 1999, which probably seems like well before you eons ago to you guys, um, we did compete in what was called the Junior Olympics at the time. Um, we got second the first year and first the second year, which was really exciting for us. And I think that our experience with the Junior Olympics was sort of what made us realize that we, we had the ability to really go far in, in ice dancing. Um, so it was really great for us, and also getting a chance to compete against people across the country, because Junior Olympics at that time was only a nationwide thing instead of international. Um, so we didn't compete against people from other countries, but getting to compete against people from all over America um, was really cool for us to see how different everybody was and, and how talented they were. Good question. Hi, my name's Caden, and will you guys be participating in the next Winter Olympics? Ooh, tough question. Um, not entirely sure yet. So we still have three years. <laughs> um, and right now we're, we're not planning on – we didn't compete last year. We're not competing this coming up season, um, which would still give us two seasons to prepare. Um, right now we're enjoying doing everything else. And I think for us, we both recognize if we want to be able to go back to the Olympics and compete at 110%, we really have to be completely motivated. So if we got in right now, we would be motivated, but we wouldn't be as motivated as we need to be. And so that's, that's the key thing that we're looking for. And so we're leaving our options open. Good question. Hi, my name is Jacob, and I wanted to know what 
are some of your short-term goals? That's a good question. Um, I think for me, um, taking some credits in school and and knocking those those college classes out of the way and trying to get my degree. Um, I think getting my degree could be considered a long-term goal, I guess, because it's going to be probably another year and a half, maybe, before I get that. When you get to be old like us, a year and a half seems like a short-term goal. Yeah, we remember <laughs> a year and a half seems like a really... How are you guys? What grade are you guys? Fifth. Fifth grade, um, okay. So when you're in fifth grade, a year and a half seems like a long time. When you've been on the planet for 28 <laughs> years, it doesn't seem like that long. Um, so somewhere between a short-term and long-term goal, but... School, for me, is probably first on the priority list right now. Yeah, me too. School, number one priority for you guys, too. <laughs> Great question. My name is Taylor, and have you ever made a mistake and learned from it? And learn from it? Is that the question? Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think everyone has done that. And even if they realize it or not, I mean, that's how you, that's how you first started walking, <laughs> you know, you got up on your two feet and you just fell on your face and then you got up again. But, um, we've done something similar to that in figure skating <laughs> where it's, it's very literally, you just, you fall down and, um, you have to learn a lot of times and in, in competition, like we were saying, uh, when you're nervous, how to deal with that pressure. And so, you know, when we were younger, we, we tried, Sometimes too hard. Sometimes we tried not enough. And to get the best results, you really have to kind of go through a series of waves to sort of figure out, you know, where exactly, you know, how much energy you want to have, how much sleep you want to have before you compete. And a lot of that was trial and error. And when I say error, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, you know, it was horrifically bad. But, um, but a lot of times it was good, too. And we definitely learned and took that with us. You know, especially at these last Olympics, we felt like we had learned just as much as we possibly could, and that was one of the reasons why we were able to win. Good question. Hi, my name is Renee, and um, what is something in the world you would change if you could? Change? Um, I think one of the things that's interesting, especially right now, I mean, there are so many things, but... Uh, <laughs> um, I think bullying is really terrible, and that's one of the reasons I think friendship and, and community month is so important. Um, you know, once upon a time, bullying only took place in person, but now with the internet, bullying can take place on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on all of these things, and so not only is bullying terrible in person, but when people have the opportunity to say things to you, but they don't have to face you, I think it makes it easier for people to say mean things, but it's still really hurtful. Um, and so while there are a lot of terrible things in the world, unfortunately, um, I think that's one of the glaring things that hopefully over the years we can continue to, to make a change and, and make the world a friendlier place um, in terms of you know the way we treat other people. Really good question. Yeah, I think along the same lines, um, you know, there are a lot of bad things in the world that, of course, everyone would want to change, you know, world hunger, peace. But unfortunately, those just aren't that feasible at the moment, especially from sitting right here. Um, but for us, I think what we like to see um, changed and improved upon is kind of the reason why we're a part of Classroom Champions, which is people taking the opportunity to try to make a positive difference in the world. You know, and if we could just encourage you guys, you know, when you as you grow up, and, and to try to make a positive difference from the lessons that you've learned here and the lessons that you will learn moving on, I think the world will just become a better place. Um, and, and so that's why we love being a part of this. That's why we love getting to talk to you. And I think the more opportunities people have to, to be in programs like this, I think the better off everyone will be. Really cool question. That was, that was fun to talk about, guys. Um, what do you eat to be healthy? I think... What do we eat to be healthy and what we don't eat to be healthy is, <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we actually, I think, talked about that in the video. Um, we, I think everything in moderation and healthy portions is, is probably a good, a good way to look at it. Um, you know, we certainly eat dessert every now and then. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of chocolate, you know, a cookie. It's true. But, you know, it's, it's realizing how much versus the, the food that's going to give you a little bit more energy, a little bit more um, nourishment, 
Um, vegetables. vegetables. That's what she means. Fruits. Choosing an apple <laughs> in, instead of um, a bag of chips. A donut, for example. Or a donut. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it just comes down to choices, and um, I don't remember if it's if, if it's something we specifically talked about in that healthy living video, but we really figured out as we got older that there were foods that made us feel good and foods that didn't make us feel good. Um, and so, <clears throat> well, we'll eat pizza every now and I had pizza for dinner last night. Um, it's okay every once in a while, but I think that um, making choices that are going to make you feel good um, is something that will just have a really positive impact on, on your life and um, not only now, but down the road as well. Cool question. My name's Gabriella, and what is your favorite book? Ooh, um, <laughs> favorite book? Well, both of us really like Lord of the Rings, so I, I think when our powers combine, that's our favorite book as a team. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, and I think for us, we, we both like fantasy and sci-fi a lot. So like The Hobbit, um, what, are, what Game, are, of Thrones? Game of Thrones? It's a, a little bit too mature for you guys, so wait about ten years. Yeah, uh, maybe thirty. <laughs> too mature for me. <laughs> but um, but no, I think I think I think Lord of the Rings is a is a pretty safe answer, and uh, it's got the writing is a little bit difficult, but once you get into it, you can really appreciate um, the way everything is described, and it's just it's so interesting too because it's kind of a look back in the way um, people would speak. So. I think one of the things we both love about fantasy books is that oftentimes the creators and the authors will create entire worlds. Um, and so to be able to, you know, especially when you're stressed out, like in skating or school, it's really cool to lose yourself in this whole world that doesn't necessarily exist. Um, and so I think that's something that draws us to books like Lord of the Rings. Definitely. Okay, last question. Hi, my name is Kaylee. Um, I was wondering, did you learn about the topics discussed in Classroom Champions as a kid? That's a really, really great question. Um, we, it depends on the topic, um, but all of the subjects, whether you know it or not, you, you sort of learn bit by bit with your own experience. Um, it's, it's nice to talk about them as we're talking about them now, which mm -hmm. is head on as a subject and talk about it as it applies to different areas of your life. You know, goal setting can apply, as we said, in school, it can apply, um, on the soccer field, it can apply with your, your future job in any way. But with, with each topic, Charlie and I really learned over, you know, the 18 plus years now that we've been skating together. <clears throat> with our experiences, both positive and negative. Um, you know, sometimes we would learn that, you know, we would go into the rink, and if we didn't have a specific direction we were going in, it was maybe a little bit harder to get work done and be efficient than it was when we knew exactly what it was we were working towards. And so things like that where we would, we would see that something worked better than maybe another way of doing something, um, like I said, with the food, choosing healthy food versus less, less healthy food, um, we could feel the direct impact. And so over time, I think we just sort of learned about the subjects in, in skating and in school. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think I think this opportunity that you guys have to, to have people who, you know, have direct experience with so many of these things and, and have had success because of their understanding of it. You know, we, we learned along the way, but we learned a lot of times the hard way. We hope that you guys don't have to learn the hard way. That's why that's why we're taking this opportunity to talk to you and, and to be a part of this Classroom Champions um, is because we want you guys to, to benefit from everything that we've gone through without necessarily having to go through some of the hardships that we had to, to get there. So, um, you know, I, I hope that you guys are taking to heart what we're saying. Obviously, you're still going to have to learn the hard way a lot of the time, but at least you'll be able to draw upon some of the things that you learned and the things that we talked about. So, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. 
so we were wondering um, two things. If we could get a picture um, Absolutely. with the students, then have you in the background. And then um, also we all created signs that we would like to send you. So the students are going oh, to yeah. right now, but we'd love, love to send them to you. Excellent. Oh, oh yeah. Can we, can, do you guys have a really clear picture right now? Yeah. Can you take a photo of everybody holding up the signs? Because... Unfortunately, our connection is a little bit. It's not uh, good enough. We can't make, we can't read what the signs say. So take a picture of the take a picture of all the signs first. Well, uh, we would love yeah we would love to see those a little bit more clearly. Okay yeah I'll definitely I can uh, tweet them out to you later. Okay That's great. Nice. Okay. All right, Thank yeah. you. And then That's we're gonna cool. take a picture yeah kind of facing the screen okay. so it might take us a second to get set up so. No problem. Just tell us with a smile. Cheese. Alright, let's do it. Cheese. Class, on the count of three, classroom champions. One, two, three. Classroom champions. Hands up, hands up. Alright, hands down. Let's take one more. Alright, and one more. Smile. One, two, three. Alright. Okay. Alright. Thank you so much, you guys. We have had so much fun working with you this year and are so proud of your work. So um, keep up the great work and we wish you guys all the best. Go right. forth into the world. Make a difference. Yes. Double wave. Double wave. Yay. Give the wave. Come to save <laughs> Thank you guys.